Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we got another printer review today. This came in a little while back from HP. This is their HP Color Laser MFP 179 FNW. It doesn't have the best name in the world, but it is one of the smallest color laser printers that I have looked at. It's not much larger than some of the inkjets we've reviewed here on the channel, yet you get some of the benefits of a laser printer that can also print in color. And we'll talk about some of the reasons why you might want to choose laser over inkjet in just a second. Now this video is being sponsored by Blue Dog Ink. Uh, they are a supplier of toner and printers for that matter. You can buy the whole package right there. Their pricing is very competitive. It is better than Amazon. Uh, you can get 5% off if you use my coupon code LONSAVE5. It's a very easy site to navigate. It won't be hard to find the toner that you're looking for. They sell the official stuff, so you don't have to worry about some knockoff cartridge messing up your printer. As you can see here with HP, they are a platinum partner. So again, check out that coupon code and head over to bluedoginc.com and let them know that I sent you when you use that code. I want to thank them for their support of the channel. Now, the printer came in separately from HP. There's no relationship here between the advertiser and the printer. This is on loan from HP, as a matter of fact, and it's going to be going back to them when we are done with this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and that includes the advertiser. The only thing the advertiser approved was the ad copy. So let's get into it now and see what this printer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. For a color laser printer, this is very compact, at least compared to things I've experienced in the past. From the edge of the paper tray here, which unfortunately sticks out a little bit, it's about 16.6 inches or about 421 millimeters to the back. So that's how much depth you need. It's about the same amount uh, going this way here. So it's kind of a square here at the bottom. And then from the top of the edge here of the scanner to the bottom, it's approximately 13.5 inches or about 344 millimeters. So it's not all that big, it weighs about 30 pounds, so it's not all that hard to lug around. And I was actually surprised by just how compact and lightweight it is for a color laser printer, which typically involves a lot more stuff inside. And let's take a look at what that stuff is here before we get into the rest of everything. So of course, uh, we have our toner here. And if you buy it from our uh, sponsor there, you'll get a better deal. Uh, so you can replace all four toners here, the black, the cyan, the magenta, and yellow, uh, for about $180, give or take, depending on uh, what sales might be going on. Uh, the black cartridge here is good for 1,000 pages. And it's important to note when they talk about pages, it's a matter of coverage. If you are you know, just printing out these huge graphics and photos and really covering the page with a lot of toner, you'll see less than what they rate. But if you're typically doing text and some light graphics, I think you'll probably come in around the uh, page length that they will rate these cartridges for. So again, the black here does about 1,000 pages. Uh, the other cartridges do 700 each. And again, it's going to vary based on how much page coverage each of these colors might be taking up when you do print out something. Uh, there is one other consumable here at the bottom, which is the drum. Uh, older HP printers used to replace the drum and the cartridge together. Uh, this one does not. So the drum itself here will be just under $200, but they rate that at about 16,000 pages. And of course, the printer will let you know uh, when it's time to do that replacement. Uh, so it might cost a little bit more per page, perhaps, than an inkjet. But one of the reasons why I like to use laser printers versus inkjets in my own usage here is because uh, inkjets tend to clog up if you don't use them all that often and you often have to use ink to get them cleaned out. Uh, so one of the nice things about laser printers is that they are always ready to go, even if it's sitting for a week or two, or even if you're only printing out a black and white page every other day or so, when you do need to print color, it will be available for you to do that. And that's one of the advantages that I've seen with laser over inkjet. And it works very well for me because I don't print all that often, and it's nice to have a printer that's always ready to go. The disadvantages of laser, though, are print quality, especially when you're looking at photographs. So for text and graphics, business graphics and charts, these printers do great. But if you're printing out a lot of photos or printing out newsletters with photos in them, you will notice that the inkjet will produce a better quality image with those photographs 
versus what you might see out of a laser printer here. And we'll test how it prints photos a little bit later in the review. Now to make a laser printer this small, there are a few sacrifices with it. The first involves paper handling. Uh, so it does have the paper tray here that sticks out. Uh, you can fit about 150 pages in here, so not all that much if you're in a really busy office. So it's probably best suited for a small office environment. And you're only really going to get about 50 pages to fit in the paper output here underneath the scanner. Uh, there is a little thing that pops out here to accommodate the pages as they come out. Uh, but just know that if you get above 50, it's probably going to get all messed up in there. So keep an eye on the printer. Uh, as things are going. There is no manual feeder on this, which was surprising to me. Uh, so that might make envelope printing or if you're printing on small cards or something a little more difficult uh, because the paper does have to get fed in through the tray here and then go all the way around the printer and curve out the front. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind, especially if you print little things all the time. Uh, the other issue is that there's no duplexing. In other words, it can't automatically flip pages over and print on the back. A lot of inexpensive inkjet printers do that, uh, but this one can't accommodate that given how uh, they jammed everything inside of this small case here. So those are some of the big gotchas with this one. And um, we'll take a look at print speed here in a second. Now on the back, you have an ethernet connection for connecting it up to your local area network. Uh, you also have a USB connection if you wanna connect it directly to a PC. And of course, you've got the power plug back there. It also has a fax built in. You can plug it into your old phone line and be able to receive faxes with this. You can set it to auto answer and it'll just print out every fax that uh, comes through on there. Now, of course, this is a multi-function device, so you can choose between fax, copy, and scan here at the top. You can make color copies if you wish or do black and white depending on the button you push over here. Uh, the ADF here, the auto document feeder, will take about 40 sheets of paper at a time. We'll look at how fast it can scan in a minute. It is not a duplexing scanner though, so it can only scan one side of the page and you have to flip it over and scan the other one. And then you've got a flatbed here as well. They uh, rate the scanner here at 4,800 DPI and we'll test all that stuff out in a minute. Now, the biggest thing I can recommend to you on one of these things is to get it connected to your network when you first get it, either by connecting up an ethernet cable or using its built-in Wi-Fi. If you go the Wi-Fi route, it's a little clunky to navigate the little two-line display here with the arrow keys and the number pad, but once you get it connected to your Wi-Fi, all of the computers on your network will be able to see it. Now, one thing I've noticed with HP printers over the years is that their consumer-oriented inkjets are a little easier to set up on Windows versus more of these business-oriented products. So for the Windows side of the equation here, you definitely need to go and download the HP software from their website if you don't have a CD-ROM drive on your computer. Uh, once you get that software installed and the printer is already on the network, it will find it and get everything configured, but it wasn't a simple point and click to get everything working. Uh, the Mac was a lot easier. All I had to do was just load up my print dialog box from my word processor and it found the printer automatically and set it all up. So Windows just takes an extra step or two, uh, but really don't go through the hassle of connecting USB first and all of that. Uh, most of us work on a network now and it's just easier to get the printer connected to the network first and then start installing all of your clients. On Windows, of course, you'll have to install that driver software on every Windows computer in the office and hopefully they can get the Windows drivers integrated into future releases of Windows 10 because at the time I'm recording this, it just doesn't set itself up automatically. So let's take a look now at print speed and we've got a bunch of gibberish text here we're going to start with, five pages in this document. So we're going to go here to print and then see how fast all this stuff prints out here. So we'll click that and get going. Uh, now the printer they rate at 19 pages per minute in black and white mode. It'll print a lot slower in color and we'll test a color document out here in a second. Uh, so it does take a little bit longer perhaps than a larger laser printer does, but it does seem to be printing a black and white document out here fairly quickly. And here it comes. Uh, you can get a look at what the print quality is here with this close-up shot to get a feel for that. Uh, even on lousier paper, you actually get a really nice sharp bit of text with these laser printers. And if you are printing documents that are mostly text that want to be read, I think you will enjoy the quality of a laser printer over that of an inkjet especially. So let's shift gears to a color document because I think this is the kind of stuff that people might print out on a color laser printer like this. We've got a lot of photos here. We've got some business graphics where you've got some very solid colors. And we're just gonna print this off here and see how fast it comes out of the printer. 
Uh, it will print color at about four pages per minute, which is a lot slower than what we got out of the black and white a little bit earlier. I also used a coated paper for this. There are uh, special papers designed for color laser printers that look a little better than the cheap stuff. I found the text documents like this look great on the cheap stuff, but this stuff where you've got more coverage of toner, you really should have a nicer paper just to get the best results out of it. So we're going to let this print here. This is on the default settings and we'll let it uh, just go here. I just want to let this run so you can see exactly how long it takes to print color versus black and white. I think that first page is coming out. Yes, it is. And here we go. So not bad. I mean, I've, I'm seeing a lot of graininess in the photo here, which is what I would expect out of a laser printer. Um, but I am concerned with this block up here. And I printed a bunch of these uh, as I was doing my evaluation of the product. It's not consistent. We don't have that uh, block of color consistent here like we have in the original document. Uh, so it's a little bit lighter here in the middle. Doesn't look all that great. Uh, also down here at the bottom, I'm seeing similar variations in the color intensity and maybe a little bit of registration issues down here at the bottom as well. So I think there's some sacrifices here in print quality to be had uh, with the price point and the compact size. The text though looks great. I mean, it is super sharp, uh, much sharper than what you would get out of a uh, inkjet printer. So the text is going to really jump off the page at you here, but it's going to be offset by uh, some of these issues related to some banding or just inconsistency uh, in the overall uh, color blocks that we've got. And by the way, this is a high coverage kind of print. So this will eat up your toner faster and goes beyond what they uh, typically anticipate when recommending the amount of pages you're going to get out of a toner cartridge. So I'm not crazy about how this looks actually. Again, I like the text, but uh, the business graphics for a laser printer should look a little better here. So let's take a look now at scanning. And what we're gonna do here is load up three documents into the auto document feeder. Uh, they do have to be face up. And remember, there is no duplex scanning here. And we're gonna jump over to my Windows machine because they have a great app on Windows and on mobile called HP Smart. And it allows you to pull documents from the scanner when they're inserted there. So I'm going to click on scan here. Uh, we're going to set some document uh, presets. I'm just gonna call these documents because that's what they kind of are. I'm gonna set it at the highest resolution, which is 300 DPI. I'm going to set the uh, compression low to get the best possible image quality. And then I'm going to click on scan here. And what'll happen is it will summon the scanner over the network and begin scanning these documents in. And you can get a feel for the speed of those documents going into the scanner here. It is not going to be winning any speed records here. Uh, but this really is on par with other uh, low cost scanners that get attached to these multifunction devices. So we'll let that uh, scan through. And as that is going, it will start feeding images back to the computer here as the process goes on. And this I found to be probably the most efficient way to get scans over to the computer. Uh, the Windows app functions really nicely and it actually works very similarly on uh, mobile devices too, including Android and iOS. So you could have your iPad right next to the scanner here and just bring in the documents that way. Looks like they came in a little crooked. Um, so maybe I've got to adjust the uh, paper handler here at the top, but you get the sense as to how all of this works. You can save this out as a PDF uh, or you can do it as a JPEG. Now we're going to do a quick copy on the flatbed and the uh, top of the scanner here will lift up a bit. So if you have something like a big book here, uh, that will actually fit on here and you can get the uh, scan head down to make a copy provided the book actually fits on top of the glass here. And we'll go ahead here and just make a quick copy. I'm going to push the black and white button, but if it was a color document, you can push the color button here and get that copy done. Uh, so what's going to happen here is the flatbed will do a scan uh, and then we'll of course have that uh, copy print out. You can set the number of copies that you want on here and there you go. You can get pretty much a similar look to what you would have on a regular copy or at a larger office. Uh, photo scanning wasn't great on this. I didn't expect it to be. I did find that although the scanner is rated for 12, uh, 4,800 DPI, uh, the max scanner resolution on the app and on third-party applications is stuck at 300. So it's not gonna be the best photo scanner. I found the images were a little washed out when I did scan a few photos in, but it's usable if you need to get something scanned into the computer. Uh, but these days I think mobile phones might do a better job of those uh, quick one-off scans. So overall, it's not a bad color laser printer. I do like the fact that it is so compact, but there are some sacrifices made here. Uh, that being the duplexing, the manual feeder, 
print quality to some degree and certainly color print speed. That's a lot of stuff to really have to think about here. But I think though, in the long run, if you are mostly printing black and white documents and occasionally print color, this is probably the better buy from just an overall cost of ownership perspective because you're not gonna have anything dry out on you. It can sit a lot longer without using that color toner and yet that color toner will be available to work exactly as it should when you go and actually do print out that color document. And I think that's one area where uh, this printer might be more compatible for those of you who again are occasionally printing things out and don't have a lot of high volume going on. I just wish the print quality was a little bit better on it. A lot of the other stuff like the scan speed and quality I can forgive just given that there aren't any better alternatives really at this price point on the inkjet side, but I was expecting a little bit better on the uh, business graphics given that we are working with a color laser printer here. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching and I wanna thank Blue Dog Inc for their support of the channel. Please let them know that you appreciate their help too by using my coupon code LONSAVE5 to get 5% off your order. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.